Some people choose the beach, others the country, but some love the mountains. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Today we are exploring one of the largest homes ever built in the mountains of the East Coast. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of this house. The Blairs were known for their wealth. John Blair had founded Blair and Company, an investment bank. At the core of his charitable passions was education. He founded one of the country's most exclusive private schools, Blair Academy, and constructed Blair Hall at Princeton University. His grandson, Clinton, continued on his grandfather's legacy by being elected the governor of the New York Stock Exchange and growing the family business. At the turn of the century, he set out with his first wife, Florence, to find a picturesque location to build their dream home. They were shown a large tract of land in Somerset County, New Jersey, which was surrounded by wooded mountains. As they surveyed the land, they found a knoll sitting above a ravine, which offered them panoramic views of the mountains. It was exactly the landscape they had been searching for. By 1903, their dream home was completed. Built in the chateauesque style, the 56,000 square foot mansion stood proud at the center of the 550 acre estate. Large stone terraces were built to retain the ground to allow for flat gardens on an otherwise steep lot. By the time it was completed, the estate had been dubbed Blair's Den. Walking through the front doors, cast in bronze, you would arrive in the Beaux-Arts interior. The staircase, cascading through a stone arch, split and curved at a landing set below a large window. To the side, covered in antique tapestries and adorned with statues, the marble gallery stretched onward, teasing you with elegance, carefully planned to block the views of other rooms. Continuing through the gallery, you would arrive in the library. With half-height bookcases set below tapestries, the wood trim had a simple profile, tying the room together, set below a Jacobian-style ceiling, from which a massive pendant light was suspended. The dining room, with gilded wall panels, boasted lavish elegance of Gilded Age glamour, with French doors set between pilasters opening onto terraces. Overall, the house contained 31 bedrooms and 25 fireplaces, comfortably accommodating guests. At its height, a staff of over 70 people were employed to maintain both the house and its grounds with gardens, pergolas, and fountains to rival those of European royals. Blair happily lived out the rest of his life in this house, passing away in 1949. He left the home to his second wife, Harriet, who made the difficult decision to sell it. It was purchased by the Sisters of St. John the Baptist and renamed to St. Joseph's Villa to be used as a Christian retreat center. During this time, the mansion became a mysterious source of folklore as some claim children disappeared here, never to be seen again. There are no credible sources to back up these claims, but the legends continue to persist. In 2002, the nuns sold the mansion. It changed hands a couple of times and then was purchased by its current owner, who plans to meticulously restore it to its former glory. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I would also like to take a moment to say a special thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen, please consider joining our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.